1075 WGCI decides number one for hip hop and R&B. It's the morning show with the Destin legend Leon Rogers, yep. the beautiful Kendra G, myself, the shortest stand man in Chicago, Kyle. And right now we have somebody in the studio that I feel like, Leon, you should really do a grand introduction for this morning. Listen, man, one of Chicago's daughters has always been out here in these streets repping and campaigning for the streets. She's from the streets, so she always gives back the one and only Miss Amina Matthews. Yeah. Hey. Good what's morning, up? good morning. What's up, what's up, Chicago? It's a pleasure to have you back in the studio. It's been yeah, a while. Yeah, it's been a, a long while, and it's been a lot going on since we last seen each other. Mm -hmm. So let's start just getting people, let's say to somebody right now who is unfamiliar with your backstory and who you are and what you represent, just give them a brief introduction to who Amina is. Uh, my name is Dr. Amina Matthews. Mm -hmm. I was born and raised on the south side of Chicago, lived on the lived in the first district all my life and was able to have a grandmother that we lived below poverty line and she was able to say look I want you to go down south and I want you to get this education and I want you to you know so I had an opportunity to see some things and then when I was able to come back home mm -hmm. and I seen that home was totally different and it was you know every time I left and came back it was deployable um, I was offered a job, uh, well, I was offered to help uh, mediation at uh, this organization called Ceasefire, formerly known as uh, Cure Violence. And, I, you know, my daughter was just four years old and she was a preemie and I took on the challenge as a crazy woman and went into the Chicago streets and, you know, a ceasefire where they was labeled as something and you know I had to clarify and make sure that peace was in order in our streets and understanding was in order in our streets and our babies were safe and that you know that in the school grounds and the cars of our, our, our families you know and that's how it was you know when when I was growing up yeah I, I we I didn't know. You played you did a big part in playing a mediator role and stopping a lot of violence in the city of Chicago yes? Yes. Okay. All Absolutely. Right, there you go. There Absolutely. You go, sure. But you were saying when you were growing up, um, let's talk about the difference of that time period and now because some will say that it's chaotic, the violence in Chicago, whereas I felt like, well, what I hear, because I didn't grow up in Chicago, that the violence used to kind of be in certain areas or if you lived that life, then you had to deal with the consequences of that life. But now we know, we talk about young children being murdered from violence. We talk about violence happening in areas that we used to think was off limits and was safe, and there's not really those um, environments anymore. It could really happen anywhere. So what do you think about that and how do we change Whew, it? That's a whole, that's a whole show right there. <laughs> you know, um, from when I was growing up, to be frankly honest, you know, I grew up on the nine, you know, from uh, right down the street from you know, where it was, the Rainbow Beach Motel. Yes, <laughs> and um, the real... Uh, East of the Ryan and the Zanzibar and the fantasy. Let me stop, y'all. Let me stop. Let me stop. <laughs> but back then, even though you know some guys and 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 mothers was struggling, guys, our families, our uncles, they were in the penitentiary. But it still was structure. You know, you get your man. You don't get somebody on the third floor, up the street, around the corner, and they don't even have anything to do with whatever pettiness that you all are trying. It's not about trying to get out and make things better. It's all about trying to, you know, um, be about something that's not productive, you know, which is, you know, like Grand Theft Auto and, you know, call to duty type of stuff. And, and you know, and one thing that we must do and the reason why that I am still out here and we can be somewhere else, Kendra, really. My, my, I'm, I'm an empty nest, you know. Me and Big Daddy can be, you know. <laughs> and, and, and my thing is to make sure that our young guys, and, and I remember coming up, and I was around maybe 14 years old, and, and one of my little cousins was watching a, um, a gangland movie, right? And the first thing that he said was, I can do that better. Mm -hmm. I said, oh, wow, okay. So now it's time for an education move, you know, to let them know about and, and, and put them on who 
you know, Hoover is. It's just not uh, only Mr. Larry Hoover. There's a J. Edgar Hoover that wanted all black men to be pushed back to the 1800s so they can implement that Sixth Amendment for mass incarceration. So, you know, one thing that the system is doing and always doing, and you guys got to understand that there's a machine that pushes Chicago, let alone Illinois, or and our country. And we have to, if it's not working for us, we have to oil it, change it, you know, do a tune-up like we do our cars. So one thing that I want you guys to know is, is that if you're game banging, you know, and it's about nothing but appeal or fitnal, and we got some young people that have children and they babies in the back seat, and you know you got you dirty, and you riding around and they chop up a baby or they kill a baby in a house, and you know, you know, just right now Chicago, we're trying to get, you know. No oh, man. So I need you all to just listen to this conversation real closely. So let's, I'm going to piggyback on that because we just had uh, Larry Hoover Jr. on. We're speaking about the situation with his father. And, uh, of course, you can give people a background on who your father is and why is it so important that you all are campaigning that they be allowed to come home to bring back the quote-unquote structure that you speak about and... I'm just be honest with you. I'm going to ask you a question. Do you think the youth will gravitate towards that? Because we're talking about, what, three or four decades between, four you know, decades, because, yes. you know, these we're talking about brothers who are in their 70s. Mm -hmm. I'm 50, so I, re I, you know, I remember, but mm -hmm. it's different talking to a 19 or 20 year old. So yes, talk sir. about that. Talk about that and, and, and how. You know, one matter? thing that I was brought up on and we always was brought up on was word, works, and deeds, you know? And I do believe that when my father gets released from being incarcerated over 34 years for a crime of not telling on the very machine of Chicago, I believe that with his story, I believe that with the energy of mother, son, and my grandfather will be able to tell and touch the young people on how we became who we were through them coming from the great migration. I do believe that there is a story greater than, and that's why they don't want him out. I do believe that, you know, I don't want you all to ever, 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 never, ever think that my dad and, and, and Brother Mr. Chairman and Larry were at each other. It was three, four, you know, rows back where brothers wasn't, as we saw in the Judas and the Black Messiah, that was kicking things off. I believe that through their stories, no, these young guys that are, you know, I want to say 25-ish and... You know, they're looking at the YouTube, that's television, and they're on something else other than reading about really on who Jeff Ford really is on how, like Brother Arnie Duncan, let's use him as an example, and he lived in Woodline. And if it was not because of my dad being able to be there and have that structure of word, works, and deeds and understanding that we're at home, he said him and his sister and his mom would never be able to go as she be a Chicago school teacher. So what came about between what's going on with why, why my father has been locked up is because they knew. They knew that one thing that if you are on the other side of this mic will come together no matter what. No matter how funky our breath stink or booty or whatever, we have to come together and vote. It's not working, we have to vote. My dad and my, you know, one thing that I wanted to say about um, how it was back in the day when you asked that question, I remember um, one time, dad be at home very briefly, very briefly and very young, and one of the guys walked past, and one of the guys that, you know, had started 
because crack cocaine came in the neighborhood that that Mr. Uh, my dad and Mr. Ford and, you know, and those fought for it not to come and CIA was pissed about that. So that's when they wanted to put the, the knee down and put Burgess in. So as the superintendent to uh, set up a lot of wrongfully convictions and, you know, but one thing that I want to finish is that I knew that this guy, we, I found out, my, my grandmother and I, we found out that the jackets that they wouldn't wear was football jackets or baseball jackets. They was at the park, so they thought that they was playing ba baseball. But what that brother did was look, and he just nodded his head, and my grandmother stopped him and asked him, did he want a hot dog? And he got a hot dog, because he knew she was going to make him get a hot dog. <laughs> and from that very, you know, from that very stance, they became boys. If they had an issue, we, they would fight it out. Okay. Yeah, if they was on the west side and, and, and they won on the west side and you lived on the south side, you, it, no, if you was on the south side and they lived on the west side, you had to walk them home. And just to be clear, with the hot dogs, they was going to be violent, but the hot dog is what stopped the violence? No, the presence of mother son, my grandmother just stopped the violence. The presence of their mothers, the because, spirit, right, you know, right. because their families came and migrated from Aberdeen, Mississippi, and different places like that. You know what I mean? And, and, and so now they come to the big city, the big lights, <coughs> and um, what they thought that that was going to be for them was still meals for their husbands and jobs for them because they had 10 and 12 children at that time. And then that's when they started closing the steel mills down on the southeast side and start pushing things back this way and pushing things up that way because the great migration of African Americans was coming from down south mm -hmm. to uh, build a greater just society, community. But um, unfortunately, um, Brother Leon, it, it, it's, it's a a thing that I, 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 I talk about all the time and, and I get, get kind of slow down, slow down, that Sixth Amendment, you know, that continues just like the, it, 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 it's, it's a, that Sixth Amendment allowed Kyle because he had money, he had backing, and he had a, a stability place to be. Yeah. Now, if that was a black person that didn't have a place to be, but they were out there and they were out there demonstrating, and that's why we need to change how things are, and it's very important to vote. So let me jump in here, and I know we're running out of time, but I want to get this in because um, we had uh, Larry Hoover Jr. and them in, and they spoke about trying to get their father home. And I want to ask you, where are you, in closing, where are you in the fight to bring your father home? And if anybody wants to support that movement, how can they um, join in with you guys? You know, um it's, it's just such a wonderful thing on how our family is coming together and making sure that we pull together and 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 get the right representation, you know, to represent the movement of uh, getting my dad out. Um, you can always reach me at hello, Dr. Dr. Amina. dot org okay hello and Dr. then okay. and and then we can take it from there um we're just really he's just really you know we the way that we're the way that the not just the pandemic but just the way that they're he's been treated during the pandemic but when i go see him and he's already in a mountain of when you go down the stairs of a hundred and 50 stairs, but if you got medical papers, you can take the elevator if you're mm -hmm. old enough. Mm -hmm. You go down five bars, six, seven bars, all, it, then you do, you know, you got to do your hand check. But then they bring him to you in shackles, and he's always been that way. So therefore, you know, I, I beg you guys to understand that there's a reason that everything is happening, you know, the, in the city of Chicago, the energy brewing up that we're coming together and that we're going to right the wrongs that need to be in our communities, in our cities, 
and in our school systems. And I need you to support free Jeff Ford. I need you guys to support that. You, I'm on, um, what's the new thing? At the real Amina Matthews. I'm <laughs> at right. the this real right. Amina Matthews. Please, you guys, let's jump on it. You know, you can always jump on Butter the Prince and uh, his uh, Instagram Shout and see um, the fundraisers that we're going to be, you know, that we're going to be doing moving forward, not backwards. They're trying to push us back, you guys. And we're going to use, like my old man, that I love him so much, and he's taught me so much through, through family members that he sent my way, is that, you know... If we're in war and your enemy retreats, likewise you do, but retreat with a strategy of war. There it People, is. we got to come together. There it is. Well, we appreciate you being here today, sharing your story. And of course, man, uh, we want people to, if they want to jump in and support the fight to get your father home, you know, we appreciate you giving that information. Uh, you got to keep us posted on how it's going, so. All right. I appreciate that. And I have some T-shirts for you guys that okay. I want. And any time that you need me, you know, um, I just want to say this. I just, I just really want to say this real quick. Because every morning that I wake up, I wake up to either someone shooting on one of our I-55, 57, 94, where our families, ours, us, who we're talking and listening to, our families travel on. that, And then you want to put it on the signs of Mr. Hoover or, or my dad, you're wrong. That's not what we do. That is not what we do. We take care of our families. We take care of our children. We do what the system, we do the very opposite of what the system taught my grandmother and my mother to do is to kick our men out so they can go to the penitentiary and have a life of trauma and our family live with a life of trauma. I'm Dr. Mina Matthews, you guys. I need you guys. I need you guys. I need you guys. We need you guys. Chicago need you guys. Vote. All right. Yeah, yeah. We appreciate you coming in today. Thank you so much. And we're going to keep everybody posted, man. Y'all know what it is. GCI. All right.